Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now there is nothing more that a man wants than to catch a big fish. And if he fancies eating it, carrying it home, cooking it, prepare it and cook it. It's also a bonus. How about having a beer with it? No, not to drink. This is a beer battered cod. The man who's going to show us this is Wayne Combin. He's a cook that specializes in catching fish and cooking them. Let's get down to his pad and check out the recipe. Okay, so uh, we've been fishing on the south coast of England. It's December, cod time. We've got some lovely, lovely fresh fillets of cod here. And we're gonna beer batter them. And they will be stunning. So, we need to make our beer batter. Very, very simple thing to make. All you need, plain flour and beer. Now, I prefer Foster's personally is a beer. Not a fan of this, this happened to be in the cupboard though. Nice and cold out of the fridge. Does actually make a very nice batter. And you can make it with all manner of lagers if you want. Um, I wouldn't use the real cheap ones, uh, make it a sort of reasonable lager. You can actually make it with real owls and stuff. The reason we're making it with uh, lagers is because obviously it's got fizz to it. And what the fizz does, um, aerates the batter makes it very, very crispy, and also gives it a lovely sort of malty taste. First thing we do, sieve our flour. This adds a little bit of air to it as well, which is what you want. So, sieve the flour. So we sift our flour, adds a nice bit of air to it. To that, decent dash of ground pepper. Touch of salt, not too much. Don't want too much salt in there. A bit more pepper. So we've just stirred our salt and pepper into the flour. Now we're gonna add our lager. Slowly, gently mix it. We don't want to knock that air out of it, so we just gently mix any lump out, lumps out of it. And what we're looking for, consistency-wise, I think is something, something like a, a gloss paint. Once, once you've mixed it. So like a thick emulsion or a thin gloss, either will do. But that's kind of what you're looking for. You don't want your batter too thin. If it's too thin, it won't stick to your fish. If it's too thick, when it cooks, it will go uh, a little bit soft and a little bit slimy. What we're looking for is the right consistency. As I say, gloss paint is a good one. Okay, so we've made up our batter. Nice consistency. That's been standing for about 20 minutes. In the meantime, we've put our oil on. This is just sunflower oil. Got it nice and hot. Don't want it too hot, because I'll tell you, hot oil, you put the fish in, it will go everywhere. But you want it hot enough so that it starts to just cook that batter immediately. Now a good way to tell whether it's hot enough is to drop a square of bread in it. If that square of bread browns in about a minute, minute and a half, your oil's just about right. Okay, there's the little bread test there. Look, that's been in about just over a minute. And if I turn that over, look at that gone very brown so that oil you can hear it spluffing away there is just about the right temperature so we'll batter our fish and I'll show you how to drop it in so here we are next to our fat at the right temperature so we're just laying in our cod fillet just shake off the excess and then straight in do not drop it straight into the bottom of the pan obviously watch your fingers but if you waft it slightly and then drop it in it doesn't fall straight to the bottom and sticks to the pan if it does that it will burn. Now I know I did that correctly because as you can see that fish is now floating nicely. With most things oil wise do not leave it, keep your eye on it. All you need to do is every now and again just turn that fish over and our piece of fish about the thickness of that fillet I've just put in there about four maybe five minutes you'll see that batter starting to go golden brown and you'll know it's ready. With this we're just going to have a some sugar snap peas, they're almost done. Some sauteed potatoes, they're getting there as well. Yeah, looking nice. And just a few carrots. But uh, the start of the show, obviously, is this beautiful fresh piece of cod. And I reckon about another three minutes and you'll see that looking lovely and golden brown.
Okay then, so here's our fish. That's been in, as I say, four, five minutes. Looking about right. That's not far off being done. You can see that fat's bubbling away nicely. A couple of scraps there. We don't like scraps, eh? Beautiful. Then go on a plate as well. There we go. That's been in now for about five and a half minutes, and that will be done. So you just drain off any excess oil, place it on a bit of kitchen roll, just let that excess oil drain off there, and we'll serve that up in a minute. One thing to remember, that's a lovely thick fillet of cod there. That one, not quite. So, the thicker one can go in just before the other one, just so as both bits cook at the same time. What I would strongly suggest is, do not overload the pot. These two bits of fish will be plenty in there. If you need to cook it in batches, you can do that if you cook it for a lot of people. It's a bit awkward with fried fish, because to keep it warm, you could put it in a low oven, but it tends to soften the batter a little. What you want, I feel, is lovely crispy batter. So I cook it in batches. As I mentioned, no more than two pieces of cod around about this size. Same thing, in. Waft it slowly, gently lower it in, so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. So that one will have a few seconds longer than this one. And that one's ready, look how it's coated that fish, beautiful. Same thing. Watch the two pieces of fish don't stick together. There we go. If they do stick together, which can happen, something like that, just separate them, there you go, they're not stuck together. Don't move fish around, just leave that in the pan now, that will start to brown. Once it hardens slightly on the outside, then you can turn it over. Don't be tempted to do it too soon, because that batter will still be soft, and what you do, you break the fish up. You break the fish up, you'll get the oil inside the batter, and it will make it very soggy. What we're trying to do here is, in effect, steam that fish within that batter. And that way, the batter is lovely and crispy on the outside, and the fish is beautifully moist on the inside. So while we're turning this fish, bear in mind that you can use this oil again. Get out all of the, you can drain it, or you can get out all of the uh, old bits of batter, any bits that's left in there. You can use it again. For me, obviously allow it to cool down before you put it anywhere. I mean, for me, once you've fried a uh, fish in oil, I only really want to use it again for fish, and really I only want to use it maybe two, three times, and then I'll discard it. Because uh, it does take on a quite a fishy taint, which um, every time you fry a bit of fish in, it smells even fishier. It will stick your kitchen out. But, uh, so maybe three times, that'll do for me. And uh, this fish won't take long now before it's done. lovely crispy batter and we'll just break into that show you what this beautiful fish looks like you can hear that batter just breaking up lovely look at that look at those white fillets of fish absolutely beautiful couldn't be moister perfectly cooked falling out absolutely stunning <laughs>